Hello and welcome to our second lesson covering photographing wildfowl, which is the group name for ducks, geese and swans. Unlike the small garden birds we looked at in lesson one, wildfowl offer a bigger target. Not only that, a whole range of techniques can be employed to photograph this group. Unlike garden birds, where we are concentrating on individuals, here we have flocks too to shoot, such as this flock of barnacle geese lifting off from a field at Cale Averrock on the Solway in Scotland. Big birds always take off into the wind, so knowing this can help you position yourself if you think an individual or flock are about to lift off. Many species are very sociable and in winter flock together, sometimes in tens of thousands. But whatever the size of flock, they all communicate with each other. You can learn to spot some of this communication, which then gives you an early warning to be ready for impending action. Many species will bob or shake their heads when ready to go, such as swans and ducks like the mallard. Once one of the party has started to head bob or shake, then the others all join in before taking off. When capturing takeoffs, to freeze the action you need a fast shutter speed at least one five hundredth of a second, and in most cases one one thousandth of a second or more. When locked on to the bird with autofocus, you need to ensure your sensor does not pick up on the wing. And because of lack of depth of field, leave the body of the bird in soft focus. This is easier said than done, but I try and avoid having vital bits of the bird, such as the head out of focus, by using a large enough depth of field to ensure most of the bird will be sharp. This technique applies too for a flock or individual flying by. In this image of a flock of king and common eiders, I was on a boat off the Norwegian coast and the group took off from the sea and flew by. They numbered a few hundred birds and so it was impossible to get them all in focus with a big enough depth of field while freezing the movement too. So I focused on a bird at mid-range in the flock, leaving some close to the camera out of focus but I think this works okay, and I like the result. With this snow goose image, I've purposely used a very shallow depth of field, f4 in this case, on a 500mm lens. By doing so, I've managed to place out of focus the hundreds of goose heads behind my subject, and the two birds in front are out of focus too, so you're drawn to the bird in sharp focus, looking at the camera. Manipulating depth of field in this way is a strong creative tool. Another image of snow geese, this time with roosting sandhill cranes. Both images have been taken at New Mexico's wonderful Bosque del Apache Reserve. Here the birds were huddled together with mist rising. It was wonderfully atmospheric. And to try and illustrate this in a picture, I used a large depth of field which helps your eye wander into the frame. I used a 500mm lens to isolate this part of the pond and then an aperture of f22 to give me the depth you see in this image. There can be occasions when a flock is very close and a short focal length lens can be used to show off not just the birds but the landscape too. By using a shorter lens you change the perspective. You can lose that more intimate feel that you get using a telephoto as illustrated in the previous image, but by using a wide angle, as in this case with the snow geese again, you take away the compression effect you get with a telephoto and expand the scene, as here where the flock can clearly be seen extending to the far shore and the mountains behind. In short, by using a different focal length for a scene such as this, you can completely change the feel of a picture. What you do create with a wide angle shot such as this is a sense of place. If you have a bird that is close, think about capturing feather detail. A close up of a wing or eye can create a powerful eye catching image. On a trip to Norway photographing sea ducks, I came across a group of long tailed ducks roosting on a harbour breakwater. They allowed close approach and I was drawn to one of the males who had his bill tucked in his feathers but was keeping a beady eye on me. I used a shallow depth of field, f4, to put the body of the bird out of focus. 
so you, the viewer, are drawn to the head and eye of the bird. I shot this vertically as I wanted to place the focal point of the picture, which is the eye, near the top of the frame, simply because I felt it worked well like this. <laughs> 